Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. I know we're late. We are 14 minutes late. I think that's the latest we've ever been. I think it is so far. It's all Dustin's fault. Yeah, it's always my fault. <laughs> Sorry we're late. Actually, I had to go to the bank. Got to pay my mortgage, man. And I was running behind. So, that was my fault. You had to do the thing. I had to do the thing in order to keep doing the thing. I had to do the bank thing in order to keep doing your drawing thing. <clears throat> in order to keep this. In order to keep this all going. But uh, anyway, it's uh, Thursday, which means we are only two days away from our master class. We have our big master class coming up this weekend, August 3rd and 4th, just in two days from now. And uh, if you guys are interested, it's really, really close. It's right there. There it is. I'm looking at it up on the screen. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I've been spending, because um, I really want to do a good job for you guys. And so I've been spending the last few days just reciting, going over my lectures and and fleshing them out, and and, uh, and the more I flesh them out, the more excited I get about them. But I'm going, to be, I'm going to be talking about my career, and some of the twists and turns, and some of the things that you can expect as an up-and-comer. Uh, I'm going to be talking about character design, and I'm going to talk about, then I'm going to do a character design demo. Next day I'm going to be talking about, uh, uh, oh no, then an animation demo. And then we talk about the next day, and we'd be talking about uh, story and the way that we construct our films in animation at Disney. And then from there, I'm going to pitch one of our movies. And uh, after that, I'm going to be doing uh, animal drawing demos, animal drawing lectures, and then creature design lectures and demos. And then in between all that stuff, we're going to be signing autographs and doing drawings for people. And it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a fun two days. It's in a beautiful location in downtown Orlando at the Repertory Theater. Uh, so check it out. Go to creatureartteacher.com forward slash Orlando 2019. That's uh, where you go to get tickets. Or just go to creatureartteacher.com. You'll find a place to get tickets there. And someone's actually asking about the, uh, um, the master class. Will we be uh, live streaming part of it? No. Know. We're not live streaming this. Now, this is exclusive only to people that have bought tickets, uh, but there is a chance that in the future, we are going to be live streaming uh, some paid events. So if that's something you guys are interested, let's say you live in India, or you live in Malaysia, or you live in Ireland, or wherever, and you can't make it, um, we are going to be setting up some events that, uh, for a nominal, nominal fee, you can be included and, uh, and it'll still be just as educational. We'll make it as great as we can, uh, but it'll be streamed. So that's something that we're looking at trying to do. But right now, this is a, an exclusive live event where I'm going to be there live. We're going to be able to meet each other. I'm going to be drawing, uh, like I said, signing autographs. I'll be filling out, sketching in people's sketchbooks and all kinds of stuff. So uh, I hope you can make it. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know it's only two days away, so mainly it's for the folks that are close by. Come on by. We'd love to see you. And, uh, and then the, ne the other thing, too. Oh, my uh, perspective course. Yes. Boop, there it is. Uh, my perspective course is, uh, well, Dustin's almost finished with it. We've done, we've finished the main shooting. Dustin's halfway through the, uh, the edit. And we're we are up for, there. yes, <laughs> and we're up for, uh, you can pre-order now. So, and that pre-order is 40% off. It's never going to be this low. So if you are interested in learning linear perspective, which is something I've been doing my whole life, and I've really been wanting to create this course for quite a while, uh, then check it out. Uh, I think you're going to learn a lot with it. So that's really cool. And then uh, the other thing, too, are my new brushes. So and I'm going to be using those today. I've got a brand new set of brushes that we just released uh, that are all texture brushes. Uh, on Tuesday, we used them and we created the elephant painting, which was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm going to use them again today. And so I thought maybe we'd do request day. Ooh, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, why don't we do a request day? Request day. Yeah, so as usual, I've got my trusty, dusty partner, Dusty, Dusty Blaze, right there. Hi. There he is. How's it going, guys? And then, uh, and then we've got Nick in Sarasota, and he's answering questions off the other... Uh, well, he's going to be writing questions off of the other platforms. Because uh, we, we go out on a lot of platforms. We go out on Facebook, YouTube. Twitch. Twitch. And Twitter. Twitter. And, and was there something it, else? No, that I was think it. We're, I think we're trying to figure out Instagram. But yeah, I, think I don't think we can do the same. Right now. Yeah. 
I don't think we can do the same on Instagram. So let's do. Um, let's start opening up for questions, and uh, also uh, let's uh, open it up for requests and see what we come up with. Alrighty. Can you can you maybe show us how to work on reptile scales today? Reptile scales. And someone else just requested draw camels, <laughs> winged horse, a lion or a tiger. I'm doing one and I'm struggling with lighting. Uh, another person says camels, <laughs> uh, sea otter, blue tiger. Well, the 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 reptile one was interesting because I think we could do. I know we've gotten requests in the past to do dragons. Yeah, dragons and uh, or any form of lizard or dinosaurs. Yeah. Why don't we do something like that? Why don't we do like a, a YouTube suggestion? Evil witch, I I casting a spell. I think we're gonna do the first person. Uh, we'll just give it to the first person that got in there, and that was reptile skin. We'll do something reptilian. So why don't we leave that open? Maybe we'll do one more request, but it has to be uh, reptilian. Dragon, a chameleon, a T Rex, T Rex, King Cobra, King Cobra, um, an Allosaurus, Kung Fu Godzilla, Komodo. Like Komodo dragon. That would yeah, be let's do that. Let me do like a let me do a dragon, kind of based on a Komodo dragon. And so we just said dragon. <laughs> yeah, well, let's just do a dragon. I, I love doing dragons, yeah. and uh, that's the other thing too. I'm in the in the beginning processes of planning out another course. We've got our birds of prey course coming up, but um, uh, you guys may not have seen my latest post on my Facebook page, but um. Uh, I did a whole, uh, over the years I've designed a lot of different fantasy creatures, elves and forest creatures and that sort of thing. And um, uh, I've done hundreds of them, thousands of them. And I just did a new post and people really responded well. So I think um, along with our Birds of Prey course coming up, I'm going to be doing a course. We're going to do a series on fantasy creatures, imaginary Ooh. creatures. And volume one is going to be forest creatures. Ooh, it's going to be like cool that. elves and sprites and things like that. So we're going to be putting together a course on my approach to designing what I think about when I design those creatures. So it could be kind of fun. That'd be interesting. Yeah. So let's do a dragon. Let me pull up a Komodo, uh, or at least a monitor lizard. I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to type in monitor. Of all the dragons of all the films that you've seen, which, which do you think is your favorite, favorite? This is my personal question. Uh, Smaug, I think, is great. Smaug from, uh, Ho Schmaug. from The Hobbit. Schmaug. I, yeah, I always pronounce that as Schmaug. Schmaug. <laughs> Schmaug. See, I love monitor lizards. They've got such a great look to them. I think a monitor lizard with uh, some uh, horns. I personally like the uh, Komodo dragon. I actually remember doing a... Um, well, the Komodo a is a, basically a giant monitor. Yeah. I remember doing a... Um, uh, school report on the Komodo dragon when I was like in third or fourth grade. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They're pretty awesome. They are indeed, and terrifying. <laughs> well, they're off, they're really nice. Like, Oh, well, they can be. Yeah, like, <laughs> here's a guy here, he just he hasn't seen his buddy in a long time. <laughs> you know? He's so adorable! <laughs> he hasn't seen his buddy in a long time. Somebody also recommends a, a dragon based on Mushu. Ah, Mushu. Mushu's already been designed. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to come up with something cool. Cooler than Mushu. So <laughs> how, how to choose color wheel for any type of painting? Can you explain? Well, I, you, you wanted, I try to stay within a certain grouping of colors. So I stay within... I like to use uh, complements, uh, but one side or the other being dominant. Uh, I also look at triads uh, as you know the, the triadic groupings to keep colors analogous colors together, so you're not jumping all over the place. Analogous grouping, uh, so um, and what I mean by analogous colors that are similar to each other, so you get yellow and yellow orange and, and uh, yellow red, you know something like that. Man, there's some a lot of monitors in here. Uh, so he says uh, maybe a kaiju type of komodo. Kaiju, like a like a giant, like something that would fight Godzilla maybe. Godzilla. Godzilla. All right, let's do that. Let me just make it up here. Make it up as you go. Yeah, I've oh. got. I've kind of got it in my head. I can see. Yeah, people. People are. Uh, 
backing him up with Smog being being awesome and somebody else went Toothless from the win. I love Toothless. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh. oh, there we go. No, 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 nothing. You're all right, mate. All right. I like dragons with kind of an overbite. An overbite? What is a overbite? Oh, like an extra long lower jaw? Yeah. Nice. You know, like, there were quite a few um, dragon designs in How to Train Your Dragon that had that had that. Do I want an eye up here? See, I don't like the eye too high up on the on the head. I'm trying something a little different here. <laughs> Put it in a school setting and it's a hall monitor lizard. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> nice. See, I want to be able to get some skin texture in here for the for the person that was asking about doing skin texture. Somebody else said a dragon with a smirk expression. Think think of dragon Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Somebody else has a tiger, and that, and that just gave me an idea. Like, what if you get what if you made a lizard like this like this Komodo that you're or monitor lizard that you're making, but with patterns of like a tiger or a snake. Oh, that's interesting. I like the tiger pattern. Idea. Yeah. Got to get muscle in here. I'm thinking about where the jaw comes back and connects. Let's turn that off. Let's do another idea. You don't want to go with your first idea. There's this Komodo dragon destroying a castle. <laughs> The castle that we stayed at. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube question. Before you left Disney, did you do work on Treasure Planet? I did not. I did not work on Treasure Planet. That was, that was a good movie. Uh, are there any plans to bring the Orlando Live event, event to other parts of the country or the world? Yes. Yes. We just want to see how this one goes. They were talking about just the, the, the workshop itself. Yeah. We want to see how this one goes, and then uh, from there, we do this. Maybe it's, I want just like a... Somebody's, somebody's saying a forked tongue? I give it a forked tongue? Uh, have you seen Ring of Fire? Yes. I have too, and I love that movie. I love the designs of the dragons. And also Matthew McConaughey, dude. <laughs> are we still so going just to, scribbling? Are we still going to get a certificate for attending the master class? Uh, are you getting a certificate? Certificate? We can. Uh, I mean, we can say that you've gone to the master class. I mean, we're not giving out any kind of diploma or anything like that. <laughs> There's, it's not. It's not that kind of thing. Could be kind of a fun little guy here. I was camping in northern Michigan. And oh, it is Smaugus, FYI. Huh? <laughs> it's Smaugus. Smaugus. Yeah. Meaning. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I do lizards. I was camping in northern Michigan and now just catching up on last Tuesday's live stream. Ask Aaron what, uh, what was it like to meet uh, Roy Disney? Oh, well, <laughs> you guys are so funny. And. I, I figured I would put in Roy Disney because you've actually met him, uh, right. but he typed in Walt Disney, so <laughs> I manipulated <laughs> that that question. <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, I never met Walt Disney, but you met Roy Disney. Yes. So what was that like? Meeting Roy is awesome. See, I don't know if I should go with the perfect 
uh, profile here. The the tip of his mouth gives off like a falcon or a uh, yeah eagle kind. I'm trying kind to mix a few other animals in here. Ah, gotcha. This one's not bad. I just don't know if I like it from that angle. Let me turn that off. I'm going to try. How about a really tiny dragon trying to look big and ferocious? <laughs> like those teeny tiny little dragons in uh, How to Train Your Dragon? Yeah. If I want you guys to come back to Chile uh, to do a lecture, how should I do it? Um, when we were there before, we were with Wacom. We would have to do something uh, on our own. Hold on, but this is this is going to be good. There we go. I want to get a nice roundness to his look here. thickness to his neck. Yeah, somebody pointed out, every single live stream, somebody's always asking, have you met Walt Disney? <laughs> <laughs> and so for me personally, anytime that somebody asks that question, I'm going to just change the first name from Walt to Roy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I want to get a roundness to his face. Uh, get that structure. I want to feel that jawline underneath. YouTube question: Will you try the application Krita for painting? I will. I've just I've never done it, but I will try it. So let me see here. I'm going to figure out. I'm liking I'm liking what I've got, and I like the scale of them. And so he says, uh, almost has an alligator snapping turtle look to the face. I'm wondering how can I change the, the faces of my drawing? Uh, they look all kind of the same for every animal species. Uh, I draw uh, anthro an animal. Anthro anthropomorphic? Uh, and, and it's like anthro animal or something, the way he spelled it out. Oh, yeah. Uh, perhaps Furries. Uh, perhaps uh, beginning the drawing with geometric forms, then add details at last? Yeah, I mean, like, start, start with big forms like I'm doing now. Then you find your details. That was to come out here. Somebody's asking, is this a turtle dragon? <laughs> uh, Devin asks, hi Aaron, when starting a drawing or painting, how many sketches, iterations do you suggest trying before settling on an idea? There is no number. You just you just do as many as it takes before you before you like what you have. Um, you know, we're like today, that's what we're going to do here. I'm just going to do as many as it takes before I end up with something I like. So like when, right now, I am going to rotate this 90 degrees. And we're going to take this guy and turn it around. So I can bring him up here, right about there. YouTube, what about a Clint Eastwood design for a dragon? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try I'll try to make this guy squint like Clint. Go ahead, make me roar. Make me roar. <laughs> so no, here, I want I want you to feel his shoulder blades under the skin. So there's a shoulder right there, and the upper arms. You know, looking at that that neck, for some reason, it made me think how interesting it would be to. Give, to give it kind of a king, uh, king cobra kind of neck. Oh, where it just it like goes extra wide. 
as a um, yeah, something like that. Hmm. Hmm. You could make it a flying dragon that could make it make it useful for him in flight. That's kind of interesting there, Dusty. The uh, Dust Taker. Uh, okay. Let me see. Let me knock this back. Let me try this. When you say Roy, you mean Roy E. Disney. <laughs> I think people are thinking of Walt's brother. <laughs> yeah, no, Roy E. Disney. Yeah. Uh, Spick, Spitchker says, hey guys, I'm a Patreon now. Oh, right on. Hey. What do you think of this, Dustin? Yeah. There's something about that that's kind of cool. and We can get some nice uh, scale patterns in here. I think it would be interesting. Nick asks, speaking of reptiles, what did you think of Rango? I find that it gets better each time I watch it. Is that Nick Birch saying that? Um, I, I I didn't like it the first time I saw it, and it's the same thing. Each time I've seen it since, I like it more and more. That's kind of the same way with um, live action Beauty and the Beast. Um, but what you're talking about with uh, Tiger Stripes, I think it would be... But, you know what I want to do with this now? Hmm. I think his neck has got to be longer. So it feels like this is his neck coming down. Yeah, like that. And then it comes down into his shoulder. Maybe I need to shrink it up a little bit. Just a tad. Just a wee tad bit. There we go. Is that a Komodo dragon? I think that's more of a uh, Komodo cobra. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little of both. But should it be a winged dragon? You think? I think it could be. So once again, I want to get, I want to make sure that I've got. There's a, sh a shoulder blade underneath, coming out to a shoulder. So I want it. The shoulder's going to have to come out here on this side. We get a little bunching of the pectoralis muscle right there. There's something kind of fun just having them standing up tall like this. I think with that pose, I think it'd be interesting if he had, like, if he was a winged dragon, like you have him unfurled out of frame. Yeah. The muscular, the, uh, I'm gonna have to have it come up in here. Now the question would be with the wings, would you want them to be feathered wings like a bird or no. would you want them uh, like a bat's wing? Like a bat's wing. It's going to have to have a lot more muscle to it, but I think we can just roll with it. I'm going to do this for now. It's, it's getting really busy. Yeah. It's too busy. Take it off. Me no likey. Take it off, take it off, take it off. <laughs> you can just... You can. I, like, I, I want to kind of just focus on his portrait now. Let me see. Let me just free transform it. Man, that, this one's getting in the way. Let me get rid of that. Okay. I 
He says it looks like a sphinx now. A sphinx? A sphinxster? A sphinx. <laughs> a sphinxster. Something like that. I think that's kind of fun. It's something we can get done in the amount of time that we have. Nice quick sketch. Well, somebody, somebody also talked about this dragon saying, uh, maybe a dragon that glides more than flies? Like a, uh, a slim flap under the arm and such. Skin flap? Skin flap. Well, he, <laughs> he, he spelled it out as slim, slim flap. <laughs> so, slim, maybe like a slim skin, flap. Slim flap. <laughs> slim flap? What's a slim flap? I mean, skin flap. Yes, that, that is, I'm sure that's what he meant, and that's what I meant. Anywho. Bell on YouTube asks, random question, but is TV paint worth it? <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> worth it. I want to invest in good animation software. <laughs> yes, it's very much worth it. They make entire features with TV paint. Random question, are you sure it's worth it? <laughs> yes, I've been using it for, what, five years? I love it. Can it be hot pink? Hot pink. Hot pink uh, dragon? You're like a female? Well, right now, I'm just going to focus on... I want it to be a little bit... Uh, have a little bit of character to it. I think it would be fun if there were some cow legs just hanging out of his mouth like a little snack. <laughs> what is your standard canvas size? Uh, right, well, usually the, the size I'm doing right now is the size I usually do, which is 20 by 16 at 300 dpi. It's 20 by 16 in uh, inches? Yep. I don't know if I like that eye. No one says, I think horns would look good on this guy. Oh, no, I don't like the old lizard eye either. You can probably give him like a snake eye. Yeah, I'm just going to give him a Did tiny you... pupil and a big iris. Mm. And then dark. There we go, that feels better. I don't know why, but that beacon, that that face in general is reminding me of the um, uh, the evil characters in uh, the Dark Crystal. Oh yeah. And, mm, <laughs> I forgot what they were called though. Just I can't remember. Sithir and Sithir, Sithir, Sithir. Bell on YouTube asks, oh, uh, uh, Raymond asks, in the perspective course, do you also take time to explain how to use perspective with characters? No, this is all linear perspective. I'm talking about linear perspective. So it's really talking about one point, two point. I mean, you'll understand when things are to scale how to place a character in it. But I don't specifically talk about uh, random ca putting characters in perspective. No, you'll you'll understand how to put them, like I said, in perspective in relation to what else you're drawing. Skeksis. That's the name of the creature. In uh, Dark Crystal. That's right. Skeksis. It's just a weird name. <laughs> weird name for a weird creature. <laughs> I cannot wait for that series. That's gonna Man, be so I good. tried watching it the other night, the old one. The old one? Yeah, just to get caught up in, in preparation for the series. Yeah. Man, it's unwatchable. <laughs> really? I think it is. I just could not get through it. I love watching it. Uh, I mean, granted, I haven't seen it in, co in a couple of years, but... Yes, yeah, so, well, try it again. See what you... I really well, I'm, I'm sure I'll still enjoy it. Great Chamberlain Im impression. Thank you. <laughs> the great Frank Oz Skeksis. Yep. The mmm. 
He was the one that kept. Um, it was the one particular character that kept making that sound in that in that movie. I think he like gets um banished or something from a after a duel. I can't remember. Yeah, this would be a fun little dragon. Out of curiosity, uh, did you... Uh, have you ever been told that you can't make animations or you'll never make this far to become one uh, <clears throat> when, you were, when you were young? And if you did, what did you do? I was never told that I couldn't do it. No, I've never... I've never had anybody tell me I couldn't do something. I did tell... My English teacher told me, because I was failing English, he... He was trying to give me a pep talk and say, hey, you got to take English a little more seriously because I know you want to be an artist, but the odds of you being an artist are pretty slim. So you might want to take English more seriously. <laughs> I didn't, though. I should have, but I didn't. I ended up going to summer school. You've taken tough uh, criticism, though. Oh, yeah. But everyone's... But it was all, it was all that, in support of me, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've never had anyone say, no, you, know, you can't do this. or Except for that one teacher. <laughs> Yeah. Like you're most likely not going to make this, so I might want to focus on this right now. <laughs> uh, have you seen Toy Story Four? I have not. Uh, have you? I have not. Yeah. Now I want to. I want to watch that movie just for Keanu Reeves. <laughs> you got a little like, Keanu Reeves crush. You have to have a man crush on Keanu Reeves. <laughs> He's just such an awesome dude. He is an awesome dude. Nick says, I still like it, but it's slow. <laughs> oh, you Dark Crystal? Yeah, he's talking about mm -hmm. Dark Crystal. It definitely is slow. I'll give it that. But I think it's at a decently good pace and also just love the the designs of every, of everything like the sets I love the designs and the scale of the sets and everything else yeah. it just it's a lot of you know it's a lot of really pretty things that just I can't get I can't I can't sit and watch it <laughs> Is this dragon going to be a good dragon, or a bad dragon, or neutral? Let's say it's a good dragon. He just looks bad. Nick says, I saw Toy Story 4. Really enjoyed it. Pretty sure they are done. Yeah. I think they are, too. That's what I've heard from some of the guys that worked on it. Yeah, this is kind of I'm, I'm, I like the con the uh, cougar cougar cobra idea, Dustin. Thank you. That was kind of cool. Yeah, as far as the um, it was the way you had the lines made, like that that narrow portion of the of the inner neck and then the uh, the main neck itself. Yeah. It just kind of had that shape, and it made me start thinking King Cobra. Yeah. If you take the films as a whole, it's really about Woody's arc as a character. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, he does kind of go from that selfish, I'm the center of attention, to realizing it's not about him. <laughs> He's not bad. He's just drawn that way. <laughs> yeah. That's Jessica Rabbit's old line. Oh, yeah. I'm not bad. I'm just drawing that. <laughs> what do you see in that rabbit? He makes me laugh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear him with, like, a geeky voice. Oh, the dragon? Or kind of like the, um, the abominable snowman in uh, Monsters, Inc.? 
Yeah. Welcome to the Himalayas. <laughs> <laughs> Snow cone. <clears throat> yeah, when as soon as he said geeky voice, I just started thinking that that kind of voice that is like very typical nerd. <laughs> hey guys, want to see my gold collection? <laughs> I got all these from this, from this castle <laughs> over the hill. <laughs> there. You give him a little bit of smoke coming out of his nostrils. What do you think is the major mistake beginning artists make when struggling to sketch live animals, like at the zoo or on safari? Um, I don't think they take enough time to, to learn the anatomy ahead of time. So they struggle with it and then they get upset when they, when they aren't able to do it. It really does take, uh, it takes some work understanding that anatomy first. Just sit and observe. Let me show you something real quick. Let me show you something. This is a, a little snippet of one of the lectures that I'm going to be giving and uh, uh, over the weekend. And uh, I want to show you something. Where'd it go? There it is. Who thinks Aaron, Dustin, and Vedanta should have their own TV show like Bob Ross and Nick would be the mysterious voice from, from the off screen? <laughs> <laughs> we would. And we should. For me, I'll be over the corner like, all right, I'm going to take this beautiful picture here right now. Ah, <laughs> oh, shoot. I don't have anything that I saved. What? Hold what, on. What'd you do? All the work I... Ah, nothing got saved. <laughs> all right, well, scratch all that. Everything that I pulled out yesterday and added to the animal drawing lecture is not there anymore. Is it all here? In this drive over here? No. Because it didn't get saved. Well, you have this hard drive over here. On this no, laptop. that's a different drive. No. Oh, well, I got to go back into it after we're done here. But I was going to talk it? about observing. I had a little thing on, on observing. Mm. And um, and uh, just really sit and observe and, and soak in the subject. Twitch question, what advice would you give to someone who is at the beginning of their drawing journey, apart from pick up a pencil? Pick up a pencil <laughs> and draw from life. Pick up a pencil and draw from life. That's what, that's my, that's my, my biggest, uh, biggest piece of advice to you if you want if you want to draw better then you got to see and observe the world around you that is if you want to draw representational imagery then you got to get out there and draw it and then later if you want to do characters and that sort of thing then you can abstract from that Man, I can't believe all that <laughs> the imagery that I pulled together is gone. Uh -oh. Somebody says about the dragon that he can hear him sounding like uh, Donald Sutherland. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will you be using the textures for this dragon? Yeah. I'm going to use some textures. So let's get in here. There, let's, I got a nice little drawing now. And that's why I always ask, have you saved? Yes. <laughs> let's save as Dragon Demo. Well, I think it was also referring to the uh, incident of not having all the stuff saved. Oh, no, I did. That's the thing. That's why I'm confused. I saved everything on... Uh, on 
on the uh, keynote. Are you sure you didn't move in on, on this drive? I mean, why do you have that the, drive? This? Doesn't work. I what? know it's not on that drive. I plugged what? that drive in to see if I can get it to work. Don't worry about that drive. Should I just unplug it then and just put it in the corner? Yeah, because I don't even think it comes. Do you look on Finder, see if it even comes up? Let me double check. That remote did. There we go. Yeah, it's not even there. Yeah, see, I, the drive is broken. I was trying to get it to work last night. It's official, the drive is broken. How did they come up with the character names for the Lion King? I have no idea. All I know is Simba means lion, which is that's pretty easy. But I don't know how they came up with the other names. Uh, are you using the Cintiq Pro with with touch? And if so, uh, no. do you like the touch aspect? No, I don't use. I don't like the touch. I don't use it. I don't like the touch. It it just gets in the way. It's very buggy, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but I uh, so I always turn it off. There's this. I could see this guy grabbing up a random armored knight and pull, pulling a Looney Tunes scene. I'm going to hug you and squeeze you and call you George. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I think I remember that particular episode. Or were there multiple? Of them? So I'm going to my texture brushes that I just made available. This is that chalk brush that I like so much. And I'm just going to lay down some local color. What's the most memorable drawing you did as a child? <laughs> I don't remember individual drawings I did as a child. I did thousands of drawings as a child. I don't remember the individual ones. How many times have you found yourself on the wrong layer? <laughs> Nick says you probably saved it to Drobo. Oh, maybe I did. I'll, I'll check. Nala is Swahili for gift. Oh, I didn't know that. Nick asked, you probably... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you just... Did Actually, I did, I did know that. I did know that Nala was Swahili for gift. I just forgot. I forgot all about that. Now, how many times have you found yourself on the wrong layer? Uh, it doesn't happen as much as it used to. It used to be like, but... Once or twice a day? Oh, it was all the time. You ever get approached uh, to illustrate novels? Uh, no, not not that much. I'm not in that world. So, um, I do not get approached to illustrate novels. This is, I want to pull the trigger on the synth, on the getting a Cintiq Pro 24, but read mixed reviews. Well, I'm on a Cintiq Pro, and I love it. You're on the... I've uh, had the Pro 24. I've had the Pro 20. I've had all of them, and I've got them on, I'm on the 32 right now, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, I just switched to the uh, set cam so they can see. Yeah, I... I you you will... <laughs> you okay? I just... <laughs> I, I think you'll, you'll love it, so... <laughs> Are you having some trouble with your words? A little bit. Hey, you'll, 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 you'll. <laughs> got it, Dustin. Got it. You got it. You sure? You got it. Um. <laughs> when something goes wrong, every IT guy. Have you tried turning it off and on again? What went wrong? I think uh, the whole deal with your. Um, trying to find your files like that you think it didn't save properly all right so now I'm gonna go in and we get that eye is it true there was an alternate ending to Lion King where Scar wins no. the battle with Simba no no so in his beak, I'm going to have him get a little bit more gray. So he says, well, that tonal value looks like a uh, sand canyon dragon. Well. Of some sort. So 
So right along his mouth, I'm going to have that just a little bit grayer. Around the eye, I want it redder. Mufasa oh, means king. Well, they just went literal, didn't they? Nick said, Nick asked, didn't you animate some of that Scar symbol battle? I did. I animated uh, some of the stuff where, where they're circling around each other. And Simba says, you don't deserve to live. Somebody noticed that um, that, draw that drawing of you uh, on that bookshelf over there, wondering who made that. Over here? Yeah. Oh, Vedanta. Yeah. She's good that way. So I'm getting a little bit of red in here. I want to get, I, I like that I've got uh, orange, so I want to do some blue uh, patterning on him. Maybe. When you've worked, um, oh, when you work with new in-betweeners and cleanup artists, What's the number one thing you have found you teach, instill, or correct in them? Say that again? Um, when you've worked with new in-betweeners and cleanup artists, when you work with new people, uh, what is the number one thing that you have found that you teach or instill or correct in them? It's, uh, see, to see the animation, don't, don't focus on the individual drawings. Really focus on the animation. And for the uh, latecomers, what animal is this? This is a dragon. We're doing a made-up little dragon here. And on his... Inside his flap here, we're going to put some designs. I'm going to go really kind of bright red with it. So it shows off his... You know, like the lizards that we have that go... Oh, yeah. And a really bright red underneath. I don't want him to have like a patterning underneath. Uh, just like you are for us, who inspired you? Oh, I've got a lot of inspiration. Glenn Keane is my number one uh, animation inspiration. And then I've got so many artists, you know, that have inspired me over the years. Um, dead historical artists, uh, um, John Singer Sargent. Joaquin Soroya, uh, Anders Zorn, those are all my favorites. That feels pretty good, eh? Yeah. YouTube question, would this dragon live in the desert? Yes, why not? It's color. Yeah, color so he said green. that is a Tatooine desert dragon. YouTube question, do you think it matters if you practice digitally or traditionally? My dad bought me a Cintiq recently, but I've heard many pros say that digital will cause bad habits. It's not going to cause bad habits. Just just draw. Uh, definitely draw traditionally, but I don't know what they mean by bad habits. If you're drawing, you're drawing. I mean, some people, you know, try to hit the undo button, but, I mean, that's just, don't worry about it. Just make sure you draw. So I'm just I'm adding some variation in some of the color here. Uh, could you maybe show us how to do a uh, to do simplified skills as well today? Yes. Uh, when you don't need to draw them all, but want to imply it's clearly a reptile. Yes, I will do that. Definitely. Cool. This is going to be kind of fun, I think. Actually, image rotation. That feels pretty good, eh? Hey, hey. It's looking pretty good there, bud. Yeah, Nick's, Nick says, I've heard old school guys that are afraid of digital say that. Exactly. Guys that have only done old school traditional, that's what they say about digital, that it causes bad habits. 
I agree with that one, Nick, 100%. Nothing I've done digitally has caused me to form any kind of bad habit other than I draw even more, which is not a bad habit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer on top. And I want to, I'm going to just play around a little bit. I want to go blue because I want to go opposite color. And I want it to go kind of bright. Did you do just the line work on the Lion King or the coloring too? No, I just, just the line, just the animation, rough animation. So yeah, let's see what I'm going to do here. I always get at least one of these questions. Uh, could you invite Glenn Keane to one of your live streams and interview him? I could. I could try. He gets really busy really quick, though. But we can give him a call. Say, hey, bud, I want to do a live stream with you. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey there, bud. Hey, bud. <laughs> Short question, are you referencing any real life animals for this dragon other than the cobra-like hood? Not really. I, I looked at some uh, monitor lizards really quick before we started. I kind of got that the inspiration for them from the neck. I really like playing, like underwater, I look at a lot of fish for their markings because I really love how they play like really bright complementary colors against each other. I got so bad with the control Z that when I went to animate on a desk, instead of going for the eraser, I was doing control Z with my hand. Mental. <laughs> yeah. That's actually pretty common. I currently have a 22 HD Cintiq, uh, but is it worth it to upgrade to the new Pro Series? Um, you know what? I I don't find a huge difference between the HD and the new screen. I mean, I know there, it, it, there is a huge difference, but I just don't see that well. <laughs> so I don't see a difference. You might be able to see better than me. So who knows? Billy asks, probably not a very important question, but did the Lion King take any sort of inspiration from Japanese animation Kimba the White Lion? I've seen some comparisons between the two. What's your opinion? You know, that's been an ongoing thing since the movie came out. 25 years ago, I can I can tell you none of us took any kind of inspiration from that from Kimba. I still have never seen Kimba, and so and there's a lot of people that don't believe it, but uh, but I've never seen it. I never wanted to see it because I didn't want to have any kind of influence from it. And uh, so there, uh, that's that. Someone's asking if you could uh, zoom in a bit uh, more on the picture just to blow it up, just so. There we go. Those are some bright blues. Yeah, I want it because when he flaps it out, it, you know, it's meant to be seen, you know? Yeah. It'd be really cool. Um, if uh, you gave kind of like a glow shine to each of those patterns. Almost like as though, um, uh, what was I gonna say? I don't know, I'm not a mind reader. I was thinking of him <laughs> as a uh, fire breather. And I think it'd be really cool if um, when he opens up his, those flaps and reveals those patterns, like he's able to make fire flow through through those areas and create a glow oh, like light like light sources you know yeah just try just try to give a, a unique anatomy idea youtube question hello from leicester in england my question is i think i said that right leicester uh what, what? do you know the artist greg uh, carola simpkins i do not don't, but I'll look them up. If Disney did another 2D feature and asked you to come work on it, would you? It depends on the feature, but yeah, I definitely would consider it, for sure. So the whole idea behind this is if he's 
being threatened, he can flash this and surprise the enemy. I'm just throwing this on here to see if it's worth doing or not. This, by the way, is going to be one of our things that I'm going to be teaching is creature creation uh, over the weekend, this weekend. At my, uh, at my master class, we're going to sit and do one the, uh, the entire from start to finish. Oh, do you like that? Those little stripes on the body? Yeah. Stick with that? Although I was thinking more black on, oh, on the outside. That's pretty cool. Like, what? I like that image, uh, Nick. More black on the outside. Well, actually, yeah. you know, like the, the you know the little spider that flaps his butt up in the air. He's bright blue. He's got all the the jumping spider. I think so. Yeah, that's. What if we did something so like that? I was thinking that? like. Yeah, I was personally thinking that would be interesting to have like more. Uh, what what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like the similar pattern to what you have uh, with his his mouth, like that gray and like that sandish pattern. Uh huh but on his back and so it makes that the blues in in his flaps like really pop out gotcha there's a there's a, a little jumping spider that's blue I can't remember what it's called but it's a peacock is it a peacock a peacock spider yeah is it that yeah uh, somebody's saying somebody uh Hang on, me research. Twitch question: Have you considered doing a landscape environment drawing tutorial? Yes, that's coming up as well. Uh, yes, it is a peacock spider. Wait, one of these? Yeah, yeah. that's kind of what I'm thinking of right here. No. Yeah. nutty with his his uh, his markings now. I'm getting a little too nutty. I'm gonna pull back. What superpower would you have and why? I'm gonna lose some of those. Flight. Because I love to fly. I'm just gonna stick with that. I would personally go with telekinesis because then I can move objects uh, like stay out of the fridge or something just be so I can be extra lazy but on top of that <laughs> I could lift myself and make myself fly through telekinesis oh, there you so go. I get two powers in one yeah oh, he's spoken like a true nerd <laughs> <laughs> I want Dustin to do a chill hop album with Elvis voiceovers there you go <laughs> chill hop album what is YouTube on? question. Hello, can you please tell me where online where online I can can I study 2D animation? Well, I've got an entire course on my website creatureartteacher.com that covers all 2D animation. So go to creatureartteacher.com and we've got an entire course there. Would you give a master very well reviewed course by the way? Hmm? Is it a very well reviewed course I should say? Yeah, we've been very lucky. We've had some great reviews. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, would Just you give have myself a, a plug. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Would you give a master class in Mexico? Oh, I'd love to. We've uh, we've actually done quite a bit of talking in Mexico. We've been there a few times, Mexico City. Uh, did you do the storyboard uh, frames uh, from Snow Bear in, photo in Photoshop and then pull them into uh, TV Paint? Yes. Now you can storyboard in TV Paint. I just find it easier to do it in uh, Photoshop. 
Or look at that guy. He's crazy, huh? Look at Very those markings. Alright, so we've got our uh, we've got our colors there. I would say the colors on his back should match the same the the, the stripe colors on his back should match the stripe colors on his head. The orange? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's just the, that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> I think it would just make the um, the patterns on the neck pop out a lot more because it's more unique color. Yeah. Because you put the blue on the on his back too, it just blends too much. Yeah, yeah, like you blend. Oh yeah, like yeah, blend. But you get what I'm saying, right? Gotta win this race. YouTube comment. I would love to have teleportation. It's so boring to walk. Ugh. <laughs> Twitch question, Mr. Blaze, I would like to know what is your favorite part of sketching or your artwork? Is it laying down the foundation sketch, base color layers, shadowing, textures, highlights, or is it something else? In other words, what is the cherry on top of every artwork piece for you? Um, for me, it's finding those last little bits of highlight that really make the, the image sing. I love every stage, don't get me wrong. I like finding the image and you know roughing things out and and refining it and all of that but there's something about hitting those last few details that really get the image to really pop that's what I really like so once again this is still being done with my <clears throat> with my uh, I wonder if I should do this What do you think of this? Too much? I really want the, this to be like super colorful. Yeah. I like I like that blend from from the back wrapping around to the front. Yeah. Yeah. I say that works. I like it. You like it a lot. I like it a lot. If this artwork were music, what would it sound like? Uh it would sound like, I don't know, let me think. Starlight Vocal Band, Skyrockets in Flight. <laughs> Speaking of dragons, have you seen the video game Dragon's Lair as a whole yeah. is animated in hand-drawn animation? Don Bluth. Yeah. Of course. That was my era, man. That was when I was in high school. That was a hard game. I still love the scene from um, Boy, this Stranger really Things 2 when uh, Dustin and the kids are playing on the uh, the drag playing the Dragon's Lair and he just curses out Dragon's Lair. Yeah, it's hard. It was super <laughs> hard. Everyone got frustrated with it back then. Was it just like the timing was always? Was yeah, awesome? it's just, yeah, and then you gotta go all the way back to the beginning. Ugh. Like if you make that one mistake, there's there was there was no checkpoints back then. No. Yeah, that would be. So what I'm doing, I've, cr I've created a layer on top, and I am, uh, where is this? I've created a layer on top, I've set it to multiply, and I'm creating shadows. Real quick, in your class, um, do you say which program you recommend for storyboarding? In my, in the storyboarding class? Yeah, in, or just in your, in your workshop in general. Uh, or just any of your lectures. Well, in the in the in the storyboarding class by Lyndon Ruddy, he talks about what he does his storyboarding in the software he uses. Uh. When you worked at Disney, did you also draw in your free time? Always. Yeah, we all did. Yeah, a lot of watercolor. A lot of watercolor and a lot of oil. Yeah, I, I did. I did a lot of it. 
a lot of oil. A lot more oil than water uh, back then, I guess, yeah. if I remember. And some of the oils you'd, you'd make took like weeks, if not months. To yeah, they took a long time. Twitch question. Would you be interested in doing something out of your comfort zone at one point? Anything like a certain style, subject animation, or even sculpting? Oh, of course. We, I think we all should do that at some point because it, you grow as an artist when you do that. There's not only was there uh, Dragon's Lair, but there was also Space Ace. Yep, Space Ace was pretty cool too. And that's pretty much the same as Dragon's Lair, just different. It, just theme in space, and, yeah. Just in space, yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite Saturday morning cartoon? Um, I love the Super Friends. Super Friends Hour. There was a, in 1974, there was a live action show called Shazam. It was oh, the Shazam yeah. and Isis Hour. This is this is back in 1974. Shazam and Isis. Yeah, hour. Shazam. The Shazam and Isis Hour back in 1974. I loved it. Shazam. I loved the Incredible Hulk. He was on every once in a while. I'm just using my textured brush to lay in some shadowing here. Like, can you make his back black and show us how to paint black scales or skin? Uh, I can darken it up. Right now I really like the coloring of him. It could go a little darker. Yeah, hey, Tim Hodge, he's asking, how big is this dragon? 10 feet tall? 20? More? Uh, he's about this big. <laughs> no, he's, uh, that big. No, I don't know. I, uh, I'm thinking, like, ten. Ten feet. He's not huge. I mean, ten feet is pretty, pretty big. Well, I'm thinking, like, in the good, like, 15, 20, 20 range. Like, he just has that that presence of, of large scale. So what I'm doing here is I'm just laying in the these shadows set to multiply using my textured brush so I can keep those textures going and then later on we're going to be laying in some scales. Should I make the background lighting or the shadows on the subject first? Uh, I like, it doesn't really matter. I like using, doing the shadows first. That's just my preference. It starts to define the form. Uh, but the lighting can do the same thing for you. I know I should, I gotta throw in a background color. Just something. Is it common for a company you work for, uh, to have you sign a contract that they own everything you draw, even in your, in your off time? Or is that more uncommon? Well, Disney had that with us originally. That was our contract. Um, but we, we as artists, we had them carve out things saying that, you know, it wasn't, they didn't get everything. You know, the very first contract I had with Disney, they owned everything that I did, whether I was at work or not. And I didn't like that because I wanted to be a painter too and I wanted to be able to show in galleries and do all of that and and, uh, and so I felt like I wanted to own my own paintings when I wasn't out, when I wasn't at work and so but they were great they were really good about it and, and uh, lightened up as they should have <laughs> from the very beginning yeah what was a typical typical day like when you worked at Disney with kids, family, painting in your free time? A typical day? Yeah. What was your typical day like? Well, we get in depending on crunch time. If we had, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if we had a crunch time happening, then we'd get in early and we'd work late and we'd have dinner at the studio and uh, maybe a couple beers here and there. 
and uh, we would just work until we had everything done and then uh, you know uh, usually that would be a few months and then uh, uh, in non crunch times then we were you know doing nine to five or nine to six I should say and um, it was just like any other work day and you come in and you sit down you you open up your scene you see what you're animating this week and talk you know you talk to people around the water cooler or whatever you know it's it's not much different than any other place uh, except we animate I love the art you did of the dogs uh, do you plan to do the same for the cats oh something yeah at some point I, I want to do something like that with cats I know there's a lot of folks out there that would like to have that YouTube question have you ever tried liquid watercolor it's like ink but watercolor colors are so vibrant compared to pan watercolor um, I don't know that I have actually I'll give those a try I'll have to try that sometime Nick says put them next to a bread box so we can get a sense of scale <laughs> uh, YouTube question can you zoom and pan yes you can see there's a lot of texture right here that I'm working in I love that kind of brush if you was in a job interview, uh, if you were in a job interview, uh, how would you answer this question? Uh, what are you doing to keep current uh, in animation technology? Um, well, I'm not really, I mean, other than using digital 2D animation software, I don't do 3D, so I'm not really keeping current at all, other than using the latest 2D technology. So there's that. And then also, you know what I want to do? I want to come back up here. You know? And I'm going to darken. Give him a shadow right across here. I know it's my go-to. I always do this. Oh, maybe right along here. When you study animal anatomy, do you start with the skeleton first, then the muscles? Because uh, that's what I'm doing, uh, and just wondering if that is the right way. Yes, that is the right way, because you need to know where those muscles attach beforehand, so yes. Did they ever allow you to listen to music while animating? Always. Always, we always, all of us listen to music while animating. We just couldn't play it out loud because we had other people around us. So unless like unless we were in an office. Like when I was in my office, I, I listened to music out loud all the time. But I just, I just didn't blare it too loud. Uh, will you do a course on how to draw dogs? I think you said so a couple of months ago. Yes, because I've done a course on how to draw wolves, uh, coyotes, and foxes. So but not we not domestic dogs. But not domestic dogs yet. So we will be doing that coming up. That's a good one. That's gooder. So there's our base. We're getting there. So now let's go to the next level. I'm going to hit some... Uh, I'm going to set that to overlay. I'll just hit some brighter areas now. I wonder if that feels a little too textured. I think it does. I'm going to use one of my other brushes. You just got a new question. What made you want to go into directing instead of staying on movies as only an animator? Um, it was just wanting to challenge myself with something new. Um, I could have stayed on as an animator, but um, you know the opportunity to direct Brother Bear, which is a movie I really wanted to work on and make, uh, it was an opportunity I couldn't resist. So that's why I did it, and uh, and I'm glad I did. It was uh, it was a really wonderful experience one of the most difficult things I've ever done and uh, one of the most rewarding things as well so I'm 
just going in here. You missing something there, Dustin? Hmm? Am I missing something? Yeah, I, was, I didn't know if there was something, somebody on there, on the, on the, uh, asking questions. Oh, I think I already answered it. Oh, gotcha. On, on, the, on the Deep Thoughts. Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. I think a really good president, a really good present for the president would be a chocolate gun. And because he's so busy, you need to run up really fast and give it to him. Remember that? No, you don't remember. That was before your time. That was the time of your life. Of course you don't remember that. I was going to say. So I'm just creating more patterning. Uh, light, getting more light on him. Is this a dragon or some kind of alien? <laughs> sure. I'm just coming up with something completely new and different. You don't want to do what everyone else sees as, like, do something different, you know? I wanted to do something, I, I thought of a dragon, I thought of uh, monitor lizards and then I thought of spiders and their markings the peacock spider there's no reason why you can't be influenced by all kinds of stuff if you had to choose between always traveling or staying at home what would you prefer you know I love to travel but man it gets exhausting uh, I uh, that's a tough one I'm sure that yeah, like 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 you said. Now I've 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 traveled all over the world, so it's a little different for me because I've already done a lot of traveling. I think I've been to almost thirty countries now, which isn't a ton, but it's it's not too bad. Uh, do you have any regrets during your entire professional career? Any regrets? Regrets. Oh, that's a good that's a good question. I do have a couple of regrets. Um, you know, just having the forethought of no, you know, I don't. I, I it's hard to say. You know, when I came back from California, when I left Disney and started working with Digital Domain, I really put a lot of faith in the in the executives, and I and I I have a big regret there that I should have played a lot more conservative. And uh, you know that sort of thing. See to see, wait and see what happened, rather than just going all in, which, which is what I did. But I'm that, that's my personality, though. When I when I do something, I see something. That's what happens with me, and sometimes it bites me in the butt, and sometimes I I do all right. In that in that case, I I got burned bad. And uh, but I learned a lot. Nick says, maybe move layers to lower left since that section of the screen is empty. Oh, but I'm used to... Nick, you're messing up my own and my entire flow. <laughs> Why, well, am I in the picture over on the left or on the right? Move me over to the left. Well, I, I can't because the mouse is all the way over yonder. Yeah, just move me over there. Over, over there. No, over there. Move me over there. Okay. Right. To the left. I'm All the way to the corner. Come on, man. Right there. Well, I didn't know if you wanted just like a slight. No, because we're not even we're not doing anything on that side. There. Oh, I just took your mouse. There you go. Good. See now people can see the layers. Yay! Can you see all the layers? Yeah. All of them. Every single one of them. Every single one. Let's do a uh, let's do our typical reflected light. Have you saved? I have. Whoops. All right.
doing our little rim lighting. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention? I've got a Patreon uh, page now. And uh, it's, it's been working out really well. And uh, uh, definitely go check out my Patreon page. And I would really appreciate it if you wanted to contribute to it because it really helps us out as far as being able to do more of these streams and provide you guys with a lot of content. Um, I've got a new Patreon page. Oh, hey, Achilles. <laughs> no, go on. Ow, ow, ow. Jesus. Crazy dog. Um... We got a new print, uh, Patreon page. It's Patreon Patreon.com backslash Aaron Blaze Art. How many years have you drawn professionally now? Um thirty one. Thirty one years. Maybe well, more than that. Thirty almost thirty five years. Yeah, a long time. I think longer than most of my listeners or viewers have been alive. YouTube question. When drawing characters like this, do you make up a personality for them in your mind? Like tone of voice, behavior, quirks and such? I kind of do. It's more... I don't know if I go that detailed, but the more I draw them, the more alive they come, they become in my mind. And I can just feel their... I don't know. There's something about it I can just feel. Getting this nice, simple, go a little brighter and a little more pure with it. YouTube question. Hey, Aaron, uh, you often talk about being loose. Why is it important? I assume it is for resting the eye. Is there any other reason? I draw pretty tightly. Do you have some tips uh, other than zooming out? Thanks. You know, drawing loose, it just keeps you focusing on the shapes, the big shapes, rather than getting caught up in the details. Save the details for later. You know, you don't have to have all those details a lot of times. You can find, you'll find that a lot of times that you just, you just need to hit a few little details here and there to get a whole image to really, to really sing. And too much detail makes a, an image become kind of boring because it's the same uh, intensity, I guess, all the way around, all over the place, and your you do get your eye gets a little tired looking at all of that. So, you know, I just recommend just try uh, using bigger brushes and uh, let's see here, using bigger brushes and, um, uh, and and don't zoom yeah zoom out. You know, try to stay focused on the big picture. See the forest before you get focused on the trees. You know, that kind of thing. Hi, Aaron and Dustin. Is it a good idea to draw animals from wildlife documentaries uh, after studying the anatomy before going to the zoo? Yeah, I do that. That's one of the that's one of the tools I use. If you can't if you can't see the animal directly right away, use it. Use doc. Uh, blah, 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 use documentaries. Use bolo. Yeah, use y'all. Use documentaries. Bolo. 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 Lose my language. Dun, dun, dun. Do you ever rotate your canvas? <laughs> I think I'm going to suck. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, 
I do every once in a while. Have you ever taken a child's random drawing and reimagined it? You ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> <laughs> That's from the movie Airplane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know if they know about it. Know. <laughs> uh, yes, I have done that. I, I did it with my kids. I remember one time um, in high school I made that um, spaceship. I drew it out and then you painted over it. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. All right, so we've got these. It's time to start bringing in some uh, s textures. Now, there's a couple of things that we can do. Um, which question? I am bad at drawing and want to improve it, but when I see my drawings, I feel bad and lose motivation to draw. Got any suggestions? Stop it. Die. Yeah, that's my suggestion. <laughs> you know, uh, if you want to improve, you just got to keep drawing. If you stop, then then maybe you don't like to draw as much as you want. As, then you're saying you are, but just you know, just do it. Get over it. Get over yourself. Just know that you're gonna. You're gonna not do well in the beginning. That's you know nobody is an expert at anything when they first start out. So you have to do it more and more, and that's just how it is. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Uh, image rotate horizontal. So we're slowly getting there. All right. So th this is another technique I want to show you guys. Um, let's do this. Um, when will you start reviewing others' art and arts and portfolios, like you mentioned a while ago? I don't know yet. We've got a lot of things that we've had going on that are uh, on our plate right now, like our uh, the master class we just had did our teaching in England. Um, we've got more travel coming up. Nick and I are going to Africa. Uh, there's a lot that we have coming up and therefore it's it's hard to say when we're going to be doing some of these things that we're going to do but we are going to be doing them we just need to get to them so one of the things I want to do here is I'm going to go with a kind of a brown color let's see here I'm going to create a new layer on a new document and I, I'm looking at I'm looking at like under his skin flap some of that shape there. Skin and I want flap. it to be, yeah, the skin flap <laughs> on his neck. And so I want, I want there to be, let's do this. If I hold my shift key down, I can create a whole bunch of lines. like so just like that now if I go edit free transform I can stretch them out so they go off the page I can bring them over to the edge and hit return then I can double that up and drag it over and I can combine those layer merge layers and then I can double that up drag it over and combine those layer merge layers and then double that again drag it over So now I've got all these lines going across, layer, uh, edit, what am I doing, layer, merge layers, now I can double this uh, up again, this time uh, edit, free transform, turn it this way, I'm going to do them at an angle, like that Dustin I think. 
I, I, I think so. Sounds about right. Bring that this way. Stretch that that way. There now go. I've got a nice grid happening. I'm going to stop answering questions just for a second here. Uh, I'll, I'll, I got these. Uh, you, Twitch question. This summer I picked up drawing again. My dexterity is way behind. Can I do anything else than just get the hours in? Uh, no. Just get the hours in. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, that's the only thing that's going to give you your dexterity back. Um, you just got to get in there and draw. Uh... Oh, next week is Shark Week. So next creature should be a shark-inspired Shark Week creature. That's a great idea. So what I'm trying to do is I want to... I'm looking at this really quickly. I'm trying to think of a way... Oh, I know what I can do. Let me do this. Um, background. I'm just going to go very light. And fill this not sure if this is the right thing to do but we'll see uh, no I'm gonna take these two I'm gonna merge those I'm gonna keep one separate then I'm gonna take one turn that off merge it with the back with that color I just created uh, layer, merge layers then I want to go to layer um, ba, 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 ba. Layer style, bevel and emboss. I think it only does that whole layer. That's that's what I thought. Okay, so cancel. Go back Z. Separate those. Now I'm going to bevel and emboss this layer. Layer style, bevel and emboss. There. Now we're getting something that's kind of cool. And I want the light direction to come from the right. You see what I'm doing there, Dustin? Yes. 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 <laughs> and I might just leave it at that. And then I'm going to turn this one on copy it again, turn that one off. I'm going to put this one underneath. And let me do, I'm going to try another effect. Layer, style, drop shadow. Hold on a second. You know, just you wait a minute, Dustin. I'm just sitting here. Distance. That's enough to scare us. Size. There we go. That's what I'm looking at, looking for. See how I'm creating a little bit of a relief on the scales? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Relief? Yeah, like you can feel... You can feel them. Ah. Ah. Oh. Bring the opacity down a little bit. Hit OK. Bring their opacity down a little bit. Bring this opacity down. Down. I'm creating scales is what I'm doing on a mass level. Just slightly. Okay, so now I'm going to take these layers I think I'm going to take the color out of that one, just make it white. Oh, Nick says, can you zoom in? Yes, I'm sorry. There, I'm going to zoom in right there. So I'm trying to create these scales. I've created a, basically a grid pattern. And then I'm going to take that grid pattern and I'm going to lay it over Oops, the uh, our lizard guy. So 
just want to do one more thing, Lair style, Bevel and Emboss. Oh, cancel. I was on the wrong layer. I want this one. Still Drop little. shadow. Sorry, I gotta. I'm gonna go. Uh, there we go. I just wanted to go a little darker. There's. So here's the there's there's our patterning that we're gonna be doing. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna go these three layers, and I'm gonna merge layers. So now they're all one layer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a section right here. I'm just going to drag it over to here. All right. So I can set this to multiply. And I'm going to bring the opacity way down. And then we're going to Edit, free transform. Probably right about in this size. That's what I'm looking for. Maybe a little bigger. And I want that. I'm trying to hit this curve. So I'm going to go to edit, warp. Now I can get this curve. Get it to match the curve of our lizard, our dragon, our dragon. Our dragon. There we go. Get some bigger scales, maybe. What do you think of that? That's not too bad, right? Hey. Yeah. Not bad at all, mate. Mike? Mike. Oi. Oi. There we go. Can you zoom in a bit more? Yeah. There we go. So you can see we've got a subtle pattern happening right there. And then all I got to do now is go in and erase. section I don't need. I don't quite think we need it in here yet. Not with the way I'm doing it. I'm going to let it fade out in some of these places. Kind of works right here, but I think I'm going to handle that a little differently. I'm just going to let it fade out. I'm going to knock that opacity back just a little bit more. I want it to be subtle. So you get a nice, you get a nice subtle feel for those. Go a little bit more. And then what I do is I can put a layer, uh, an overlay layer on top. And we'll just go with a kind of a lighter color. And I'm going to go with my drawing brush. And just lightly, it takes a little while, but I can go in and hit the edges that are supposed to be in light. I don't have to hit all of them. I just have to hit enough that get it to pop, like along these edges here. And I'll, ultimately, I'll have this whole thing laid out and nice and light. YouTube comment. My goodness, I'm drawing every scale when I draw a snake. Uh, <laughs> I will do this next time. Yeah, see, you can, you can, there's lots of shortcuts you can do, so you don't have to do that. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. And then pretty soon after this, I'm going to draw over the top of the of the line drawing art. Let me blow this up even more so you can see. 
I'm assuming most people are watching this on their phone. Yes. So you can see you get a nice consistent scale pattern if you plan ahead and draw on the you know create another grid there so you can see we got a nice we got a nice little scale pattern going there and then if I put another layer on top of that and grab a nice bright color edge going here. I, I, I'm going to hit it with my, with my uh, dry brush later on and rough up these edges. Oh, what am I doing? There we go. What are you doing? What, what are you doing? What are you doing? Arr. Arr. <laughs> so back to our overlay. See, the problem with red and uh, it's just a it's just a problem. The problem with red is that you can't get bright red. If you go bright red, you get pink. Red is one of those colors where it's just red. Like you can get bright blue, you can get bright yellow, you can get bright green, but you can't get bright red. Red only gets so bright and then it doesn't get any brighter. And so when I try to put a highlight on here, it starts to turn orange. What's interesting though is I can go in because these are scales. Let's say I want that to be a highlight. No, saying Dustin, can you move uh, the picture with Aaron to the right or to the top, please? The Facebook comments are right over his picture, so we can't see him. You guys don't need to see me. So here I'm putting little little tiny highlights on the scales this is probably more detail than we need just like a little little glint it's a nice little texture yeah we'll do the same thing over here this is where the little it's where the rubber hits the road, baby. You can barely see the road for the heat running off of it. Coming off of it. There we go. Does your perspective video cover reflections in water and mirrors? Um, does it cover shadows caused uh You know what? I didn't cover that. Lights? That might be something I should add. You know what? I'm going to add that. We've got time before the pre-order comes out. I'm going to add that. I completely forgot about doing uh, um, reflections and shadows and shadows. Yeah, because that is a definite. That's definitely part of linear perspective. Thank you, whoever who asked that. Uh, Jimmy Nicholson. Hey, Jimmy Nicholson, you just you just got that added to the course. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> YouTube question: Do you ever make a traditional painting and then add digital textures like this? Uh, no, I don't think I have. No. But what I will do is I'll do a traditional painting, and if I'm struggling with the painting, I'll take a picture of it and bring it into Photoshop and work on it in Photoshop to figure out the problems, and then I'll print that image out and use that as my reference. So there, so now you can see how you can create a pattern and use it uh, for your benefit. So there's that. Let's add another piece. I'm going to come over here. We're going to deselect. I'm going to grab that piece along the neck there. I think I went too big. Let's see. Yeah, I definitely went too big. I'm going to multiply it. Mm. Knock it back. Transform it. 
Transform. Transform. Whoops, didn't mean for it to do that. Photoshop free transform. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <pretty good. laughs> My name is Optimus Prime. <laughs> like if I if I if if my uh, if I had like a really bad uh, um, raspy voice, like like if uh, like uh, having a hangover or something when like when you're like like I do, like you do, <laughs> like you get that extra deep voice. Yeah. At that point, I can I can pull off a great Optimus Prime, but during times like this, it's a little bit trickier. Because you really gotta get that voice really low. Yeah. Let's see if that'll work. Bum, bum, bum. And you don't need, I don't need to have highlights on every piece of, you know, scale. Just little areas. Whoops. That should be there. Like he's definitely catching some light here. Are you just gonna uh, scale the the neck area? Or no, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna work head? on the body as well. Gotcha. Okay, well, I just don't want it to be super, super strong. There we go. Have you done something like that before, or are you experimenting? No, I've done lots of this before. This is how I get a lot of the textures on my creatures. This is photo bashing. This is what's called photo bashing. Everyone goes, isn't that cheating? Yep, I'm totally cheating. But look at all the time I'm saving. Dustin's voice is great for dubbing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, one of the things I thought of doing was getting to a voice acting, but... Yeah. You can do a little bit with me. A little bit. I think you'd be good at it. Thank you. <laughs> so I wrote, this really requires a lot of patience. It does, but imagine how much patience you'd have to do if you weren't using a pattern to throw in here. I can't even imagine. This is not nearly the amount of patience that you would normally need. There. There we go. Now it feels like those patterns are integrated right into the skin. So let's do the other side. There we go. Ba -ba -ba. Let's go ahead and, well, I don't want to flop it. Uh, Select, deselect. I am going to get that section. Drag them over. I think I went too big on the scales again. Multiply. Edit. Free transform. I'm going to do this. Edit. Horizontal. There, I want those scales going up the other way.
pretty much want the uh, mirrored sort of pattern. Yeah. Is that it? Warp. Going to warp back to the scale of shoes. <laughs> oh my. Oh. <laughs> Those are some nice skills you got there, Mr. Dragon. Oh, bye. <laughs> I wonder if I can get away with... Nah, it's too square. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do it, Dustin. Not going to do it. <laughs> got to be there or be square. All right. So we're slowly getting some pattern. <coughs> <coughs> Coughing. You okay there, bud? Yeah, I'm all right there, bud. All right, uh, let me do another one. I need... I'm just going to rotate the whole thing. There we go. I need nice bush impression, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Danny Carvey imitating bush impression. <laughs> Is it even possible for you to make a set of directional scale brushes? You know what? Uh, yes, it is possible. I could do that. I think I've experimented that myself. I can't remember what. I've got something was. similar that I, I tried to make. I didn't like it, so I didn't release it. Did you just drop one? No. Oh. Why? <laughs> I thought you dropped a chalupa there. Nope. That was just, that was just me moving my butt around. Oh, uh, gotcha. You know... All right, here we go. When you're at Walmart, uh, this creature jumps up to you and shouts, Did you put away your shopping cart? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, you got, it's got to have that, that Optimus Prime kind of voice. <laughs> yeah. Did you put away your shopping cart? <laughs> got to stretch these out just a little bit more. Actually, what kind of, actually, what kind of voice would they have? Because whenever I hear... Whenever I'm thinking of a dragon, I'm thinking of Benedict Cumberbatch from uh, Smaug. Yeah. Ugh. Man, I'm screwing this up. Well, All stop right. doing that. I gotta start over. Actually, let me do this. I can leave it there. Z. Z. There we go. Stop it. Oh, no. That's not what I want. You got a big bit of a dark crystal Skeksis. By going on. He does. The dragon really does. Doesn't need more than that. Uh, warp. Nick says sketchbooks are are this week and just arrived and they look very good. Ooh. So that's another thing. Um, we were going to surprise you, but uh, we um, for those that are going to be there. But we ordered sketchbooks and. Um, you know, I'm just going to do this whole thing. We ordered sketchbooks, and they just arrived with Nick, and uh, he said they look really good. Maybe you can take a picture, Nick. <laughs> and somebody said, this is the cart guardian. Yeah. The cart guardian. The yes. cart guardian. Yes. Uh, good enough. I'm just I'm going to stop messing with this. It's good enough. I am the Cart Guardian. So here I'm going to knock that back just a touch. There we go, that feels better. You don't want it to be too overpowered, you see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of this blue. Nick, take the pick. What kind of sketchbooks uh, do you use? Uh, Strathmore lately. Uh, Strathmore Gray. Whoops. 
Strathmore Gray sketchbooks. So Dustin, in the voice of Optimus, what program is Aaron using? <clears throat> Aaron is using Photoshop. <laughs> That's the best I can do right Aaron. now. Who's Aaron? Aaron. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, though. You know, you weren't too far off the money there. Like I said, it needs to be, like, at the right time of day. <laughs> it's like, the voice needs to be properly warmed up and all, the, all this jazz. Like, it's, it's a really tricky voice to pull off. Aaron. 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 <laughs> uh, what are the sketchbooks for the seminar? What are they? They're yeah. just they're small. They're just they're giveaways, but it's uh it's a sketchbook that um that has one of my one of my sketches from my one of my sketchbooks on the cover. Ah. So it was a little giveaway for that. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Aaron did roll his R's. I cannot roll my R's. You cannot roll your R's? No, I can't. Shut up, man. Just no. give. Why not just give it a try? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been able to do it. <laughs> I can't. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we want another pattern. So there's for under his neck. What do we want to do for his face? We could do the same thing on his face. You want to see what that looks like? Yeah. A. Codwell on YouTube says, I met you at the 90 93 at the Siri Lester workshop in Alaska. Yes, you did. How are you? I did that workshop. That was a fun workshop. That was my first trip to Alaska. How did I hang it on? It was awesome. All right, so I'm just going to take a little chunk right here. I'm going to bring it right up here. I'm going to set that to multiply. I'm going to drop that percentage way down. I'm going to bring this up here. I'm going to bring this way down. Right about in here. Now we're going to start wrapping. You're going to start wrapping? Yeah. <laughs> We want those scales to follow form of what it is that we are creating here. So we want those scales to follow right around. So you're setting up for the lower jaw. Yes. I was wondering what you were doing. You see that? You see yeah. it wrapping around? I see it, sir. Oh, that works That works pretty well, actually. And then I just have to come in and re-race. I love it when a plan comes together. Right off the top. Are each of these uh, scale patterns on a different layer? Yes. So I'm just taking one piece at a time and I just keep throwing it on top, just like that. That looks pretty good. You like that? Yeah. It fits. It is. It is. And so then I just have to go in with my bright color 
and now you want to hit a hundred percent yeah I'm going to hit all the little sections here that give our just along the highlights I think with the overlay uh-huh 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 uh -huh. uh -huh. got to make some skills yeah I don't have to hit them all just enough that the eye will fill in the rest Oh, that's my phone. My phone's ringing. Is that what that is? And Nick, I don't know if Nick's trying to call me or not. But Nick, if that's you, I'm. My phone's in the other room. There we go. Should I just go grab it? No, it's probably a. Uh, it's probably a uh, telemarketer. There we go. Well, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to go in there and just shut it up. <laughs> nah. So there, we got scales on the face. In the face. In the face. <laughs> and you can Hangover. see, you can see how, you know, using that warp tool, you can get that pattern to wrap right around the form of the, whatever it is that you're creating. It's a very cool... Nick says, it wasn't me. It wasn't, it wasn't me. me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. So good, then it was a telemarketer. <laughs> Nick, the thing is in the other thing. There, so. How long have we been at this? Uh, it is currently 3.15. Two, oh, so two hours and 15 minutes? Yes. So, we're getting there. Uh, I just wanted you guys to see. <laughs> Almost there. You can see the scale pattern, how, how much fun that is. When you, when you, uh take enough time to create a little scale pattern off to the side. Now let's do this. It wasn't. I was wondering if you're going to pull that up, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. Was that Shaggy? I think so. I can't remember. It was so long ago. Warren says, uh, I bet that's your brother Travis on your phone trolling you again. Yeah, it could be. He does that. Hey there, brother. How are you doing? Just saw you live stream. Thought I'd call. <laughs> Put my voice out there. Say hi. And bye. <laughs> so let's bring that down to the right size first. Mark that percentage up just a little bit. Now we're going to let's bring that down again. So I gotta make the eyebrow like its own scale pattern? That it. Warp. Yeah. First thing I wanna do is get everything warping. Warp big your face here. Warping, get it all warping. Do my. Uh, what about simplifying the scales, or will that be later? Yeah, you can go ahead and simplify. Right now, I'm just showing you how to lay them in. You can definitely go in and simplify them. Are you gonna Are you gonna simplify like the the body portion, like that's currently in the shadows? There we go. Uh, yes. I'll put a little extra, just a little extra darkness on there. Got a little bit of got a little bit of scale in here, just enough to. Whoops, there we go. Just enough to get it to feel like it's part of the thing, the thing. How is the little animal doing that? 
that he showed up in one of your live streams. Forgot what kind of animal it was. What, our poodle? Either a poodle or might be a dog. If you're talking about our poodle, he's great. Or if we're talking about like way back then, uh, the, um, the possum, the possum maybe. Well, he wasn't so great. Hmm? He wasn't so great. That one, he didn't quite make it. We got a new one now. Brian does. There. Let's do some uh, let's do some highlights over the eye. So I think we're getting to a place where we can kind of start taking it easy here. I'm gonna go multiply. Oops, multiply, multiply. We gotta multiply that layer. Pamela asks, you don't use the liquify filter? I do not. Mark says, yeah, the opossum. Now, there's a new opossum in, uh, in Ryan's family, but yeah, the in old Brian's one uh, passed. Yeah, he passed. Yeah, they're very, um, they're very sensitive. Well, first of all, opossums only live about three years. Really? That's it? That's it, yeah. They weren't handed the longevity genes. Apparently not. So here I'm just going in and adding a little bit of shadow on some of those lip scales. There we go. And simplify, I mean, as in uh, simplify for, say, a tune. Like, that wouldn't need so much detail, but needs to imply scales. Oh, yeah. There we go. Image rotation. Twitch question Have you ever killed an animal? That's a very personable, personal, emotional question. I did. I killed, uh, when I was young, I went duck hunting with my brother, and I cried all the way home. That's when I learned I wasn't a hunter. Then when I was a teenager, um, we had a lot of game, you know, chickens and ducks and geese and all kinds of stuff in our, you know, that we were raising. And I came home, and there was a giant rattlesnake right in the middle of all the animals and they weren't leaving it alone and it was striking at the animals and I knew that they were going to die if I didn't do something and so I ran in the house and uh, we had a couple of guns in the house I've never been a gun owner uh, but my parents were and uh, and so I grabbed the 22 pistol and I went outside and I shot the snake and killed it it was a big one it was as big as my arm you know, big head, and it was a big female. I felt really very, very bad about it, and so I asked, I cleaned it, I skinned it all out before my parents got home, gutted it, and uh, tacked the skin up on the on a uh, board. I used the head for reference for drawing because I didn't want it, didn't want it to go to waste. And then I asked my mother to cook the snake for dinner, and she did. Oh. So we had rattlesnake for dinner. Um, because I felt bad that I had to shoot it, and so if, we, if I shot it, I felt like I needed to eat it, because that's the law of the land. And so we had rattlesnake for dinner, and everything, I felt, I felt better about it. Nice. I remember yelling at it while I was shooting it, just like, why are you doing this, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's <so> crazy. <laughs> I don't want to kill you. Stop doing it. Yeah. I'm in a glass cage of emotions. <laughs> I felt horrible. I didn't want to kill it. 
Larry No. Good afternoon, Aaron. I'm late again, but glad I decided to come on. I love the detail in the scales here. Now I need to learn to do this in Procreate. Well, it's really just doing layers. But I said, stop doing the thing, Snake. <laughs> yeah, stop doing the thing. Stop doing the thing. I felt horrible. Then he didn't feel bad for the snake when he ate it. Martin says. No, I didn't because I felt okay. At least I'm at least I'm not wasting it. At least it didn't it get didn't give up its life for nothing. Right. So now what I can do is on this on the twentieth layer. Yeah, on the twentieth layer. See, I want to. I can take that and go to that twentieth layer and use my. My uh, cloning tool, my cloning stamp, which is right here, and I'm going to knock that size down. But I can just put it by pushing the option. I want it to clone that part, and I can come up here. The horns almost look like glass. Oh, that's interesting. Let's put a little. I, you know what? I completely screwed that up. I don't. I, I, Using the clone tool was not the right idea. Mm. Let's get to go back. We're going to grab a little section. I'm going to drag it over. 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 Over and out. Over and out. Yeah, right there. And then we're going to set it to multiply. Knock that opacity back to there. Bring that up here. We'll shrink it down like so. And then we're going to warp the heck out of it. Warp the heck out of it? We're going to warp the heck out of it. That sounds like a great plan. <laughs> Get those scales to fit right on there. Right on there? And I notice, you know what I notice when I'm doing this kind of stuff? I'm a total mouth breather. You've always been like that. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so we got some of that going on over here. It's not the right one. Where is it? 14. There it is. Over there. Yeah, we're almost there. Yeah, the person that, um, I don't know if this was the person that asked earlier, but, um, but for this latecomer, uh, Jimmy Nicholson, he asked, uh, does your perspective video cover reflections in water and mirrors, and does it cover shadows caused by man-made lights? No, uh, yeah, no, it doesn't, and that's, that's why I decided I'm going to go back and do it. I think he left the stream earlier when we when we officially answered that question. Oh, I guess, yeah. Just a couple more details. I'm going to do the brow. I'm going to do the do. Okay. Come on. Have you ever seen the International Space Station? You live near Cape Canaveral, right? I do live near Cape Canaveral. I've never. The only time I've seen the International Space Station is when it flew over us.
There's your scales everywhere, dear bud. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Scales everywhere. That warp tool, transform tool, is is completely necessary. Did you just drop one? No. Oh. I was wondering why you're giggling. No, it's just in my head. <laughs> transform. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I get a lot of the weirdest things. Yeah, see, I can get these scales to fit the brow a little better. Have you ever gone to a race at Daytona? Never have. I haven't either, but I really want to. There we go. That fits the fits the brow pretty good, eh? Yeah, it fits here pretty good, Derry. Fits the brow pretty good, eh? Oh, it's pretty good there, but. <laughs> uh, do you already have an idea for what you want to draw in World uh, Lines Day? No, not yet. I don't know yet. Oh, you better figure one out there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got texture pretty much. I haven't done the left side of the face yet. Or the screen left side, but... We're good enough right now because I want to. I want to get this thing done. <laughs> so this is a way you can do scales all over your creature, just like a saw. Right? That's a lot of scales there, bud. Nick says I suggest something involving a lion for a drawing for World Lion Day. So good. That's good, Nick. Good one. Good one. Yeah, I figure if if it's something else other than a lion, you have a lot of angry lions. I suggest you let that sit there and marinate. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do that. Uh, so I was asking, is this Photoshop or Clip Studio? This is Photoshop. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit of blue in here. I'm gonna put a layer on top. I'm gonna knock that opacity back. I'm gonna grab a nice soft brush here. Did you have to throw away your charcoal drawing after the cat pooped on it, or did you frame it after, uh, before? Like before? Uh, no, it's uh, it's just sitting in the corner right now. It, the, all the poop got scraped off. But it wasn't framed uh, beforehand. It was not framed, no. It was exposed. <laughs> so I suggest uh, should make uh, Dustin into a lion. There you Rawr. go. Rawr. 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 But well, technically, you already did that with the oh my animation. Oh, yeah. So here I'm just hitting his eye, getting a nice little glint happening in there. So I was asking, what about some bioluminescence uh, coming from the hood markings? Are you crazy? Kind of like, kind That's like insane. It's pretty much what happens process. to your drawings when you complete them? Uh, we throw them out. Just junk it. <laughs> so now I'm going through and just hitting some highlights on some of these scales. That is the wrong soft brown. That is the wrong one as well. Where is it? Somebody mentioned uh, on here about YouTube, and I just instantly started thinking of the moment when we watched a, an old live stream playback and we slowed down the time and so it made us sound like two drunken idiots. Yeah. <laughs> so when you Oh yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, uh, a lot of my drawings for the person that asked what happens to your drawings when you complete them, um, they are going to be made available on my Patreon account. This image right here will be made available on the Patreon account 
as the, the entire Photoshop file. So you'll be able to get all of the layers, break it down, and see how we did this. It's really cool. It's going to be neat. If I do say so myself. I'm just going through right now and putting in some eye detail. Having some fun with that. Can you explain the thing with Jim Jackson who moved on the moon? Is this an inside joke? No, come on. Jim Jackson is... Well, Jim Jackson's going to be doing a course for us. And uh, he's one of the most brilliant animators ever. And you know there's not a joke at all. Wasn't he the 13th? He's the 11th man oh, to 11. walk on the man on the moon. 11th man to yeah. walk on the moon. That's what it was. <laughs> okay, this, this question's got to be a joke. <laughs> Aaron, have you thought about working for Disney? You're really good at drawing. <laughs> <laughs> So, now I'm going to put a layer on top. On top. We got to end these games. Oh. Lemony. There. I'm going to go to my, go to my dry brush. Going to go a little dry. David asks, do you consider this character suitable for animation? No, not yet. It'd be a lot to have to figure out on this guy still. Also depends if you want to draw in 2D or animate in 3D. Yeah, this is not suitable for, for 2D at all. <laughs> it is way over. Twitch question, is the mouth the hardest part to animate? Hmm, that's an interesting question. No, I don't consider the mouth the hardest part to animate. Uh, I think it's a hard part to animate. Uh, there's no, I don't think there's any hardest part. Probably depends on what kind of, depends on what you're trying to make talk. Like creatures like Smog, for instance, with the extra long mouths and everything are probably harder to animate in a conversation. But, I think it just depends on the character. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. But it's there's a lot of different things that make animation difficult. So there's no... Mouth shapes are not necessarily the most difficult thing for me. So it's... Although it can be difficult. I know you said no bioluminescence, but what about iridescence? I, I Yes, we could do that, but I just... Iridescence takes a, quite a bit of time to render, and I'm not going to render that right now. Iridescence? Yeah. What is that again? Like iridescence, like in the feathers of birds. Uh, YouTube question. Have you ever done anything for the Disney parks? Um, well, for WDI, I went and did, did some uh, lecturing over there after I left Disney, um, which was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. So there, we're getting somewhat close to being somewhat done. I mean, this is just taking a long time. You have a favorite classic Disney character? Yeah, I'm gonna do. Um, mm, not really. Not a Disney character. What did I just do? There we go. Just gonna go in and just hit some of these areas. Can't seem to stop.
Nick says, as far as attractions go, your art has been featured in some of the attractions. Also, didn't you do a Dumbo animation for an attraction? Technically, you were the attra you were an attraction. Yes, technically we were when we were at, at Disney Animation. Yeah, for Disney for uh, Disney uh, for the uh, Disney Paris Disney Euro Disneyland. I did some Dumbo animation for a commercial for that, and that was one of the first things I ever animated was Dumbo, which is pretty cool. And if you go into California Adventure, uh, into the animation uh, exhibit, um, my drawings are used as an example for the animation going across the across the ceiling and everything, and that's kind of cool too. It was very much a, an honor for them to use those those drawings or beast drawings. Did your partner Nick uh, work at Disney? Nick did not work at Disney. He, he wanted to, but the uh, animation, kind of the bottom of the animation fell out before he was able to graduate college. By the time he graduated college, the, the studio was shutting down. Uh, will you do a live video when you draw the World Lions Day uh, piece? It's on the 10th of August. Uh, that's a good idea. Maybe we will. So I'm just hitting some nice, whoops, some little details here. What was the, the most, oh sorry. I was going to say, so you can see real quick, you know, if you lay in that pattern, you can manipulate it, paint highlights, te put texture on it. You know, you can do all kinds of stuff to that pattern once you lay it in and it really works well and, and it takes a lot of the work away for you. And you can see, you can just warp it and then paint the highlights, shadows, all of that, and it comes together really well. Frank on YouTube says, I worked with a guy who worked in the Florida Disney, and he said he did not mind working in the fishbowl so much. No, you get used to it. You really do. It didn't bother me so much. What was the most challenging scene you had to animate during your days at Disney? Oh, I had a lot of challenging scenes. Every scene that was a challenge in some form or another. Um probably the most challenging to get the the acting working right is a scene a sequence that I always talk about which is uh, in Beauty and the Beast where Belle is trying to bandage Beast's arm after he's been attacked by the wolves and uh, that was a, that entire sequence where they start to argue um, I animated that but it was also one of my first major sequences I'd ever animated and so it was a big weight on my shoulders to get it right you know um, but I took my time and spent several months getting it done and by the time I was done it really provided me with uh, some really great animation that I could show on my reel for the next movie which was Aladdin and so on Aladdin I was able to get my own character with Raja because of the animation that I did on Beauty and the Beast and I wouldn't have been able to do that on Beauty and the Beast had Glenn Keane not been generous enough to give that to me. So I really owe it all to Glenn Keane for that. You worked on a lot of Disney movies. Uh, what about characters such as Mickey and Goofy and the like? Have you done any work on those? Very, very little. I worked on uh, um, Prince and the Pauper, the, the Mickey version of Prince and the Pauper. I worked on that. Prince and the Pauper, which one was that one? Uh, it's where Mickey has a twin and they trade places. Oh, and like his brother's like the crazy, yeah, crazy wild one. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So you can see all the textures on his face. And your first dir directing gig was was a, a goofy short. Wasn't yeah, it? I directed yeah. a goofy short, How to Haunt a House. How to Haunt a House. Um, Twitch question, what do you think of the animation style of the family guy? I love it. I think it's pretty cool, to be honest with you. What was the question about family guy? Yeah, what do I think of the, fa the animation oh. style of family guy? So I'm just going to call this uh, done here in just a second. I'm going I'm to do a little cheat and blur some areas out. 
But this is kind of fun. I really wanted to show you guys how you could take a scale pattern and layer it over your painting and get it to sit. Um, oh, Spencer the Dog on YouTube asks, if you could only have three art supplies besides a sketchbook or some paper, what would they be? Also, like if you said your watercolors, all of the colors would count as one supply. Yeah, it's, for me it'd be watercolors. Uh, I'd, I'd have to have a brush pen that never ran out. Pencil and my paint. My watercolors. But you need you need a canvas for, uh, to paint on. Well, he said other than sketchbook and paper. Oh, uh, oh, other than that? Yeah. Gotcha. Let me do this. I'll open. Grunge. Did Glenn Keane ever direct a feature? Uh, no. Not at Disney. Uh, he directed, um, the Deer Basketball short, didn't he? Or? Yes. And animated it, but that was Disney. Was Rapunzel directed by Glenn Key? No, Tangled was directed by Byron Howard and Nathan Greta. Ah. Who we all see, we all used to work together in Florida. Oh. Even have in you, Florida. Have you been to Madagascar? I've never been, and I would love to go. That sounds like a fun spot. Yeah. So I've got this grunge, and I'm thinking I'd like to put it all over the character. Just want to dirty him up a little bit. What do you think, Dustin? The grudge tool? Yeah, I like it. I'll just get him all dirtied up. Oh, not using it to frame the. No, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm dirtying him up. Oh. Thought I'd try that out. What do you think? Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. Have you ever animated a character whose design you weren't particularly fond of? Um, yes. I'm trying to think of an example. I've done some commercial work on with characters that I wasn't happy with the design. I did some stuff for Target. Um, I did a character it, it, it wasn't that I wasn't happy with the design I thought I think people love this character who remember it um, but I just I found him kind of awkward to draw was a character named Marsupilami do you remember Marsupilami? no it was a character uh, back in the no early 90s that had this super long tail and uh, I just found it very awkward to animate. Or super long. Oh, someone was asking who the uh, green creature was that you got the uh, grunge from. Oh, that was just a old drawing that I did, old uh, forest creature image. I'm just giving him a little underglow, a little red underglow, like bounced light. Have you ever animated Mickey Mouse? Yes, I have. I animated Mickey Mouse and Mickey's Prince, Prince and the Pauper. Just a little bit, not much. All right, I'm, I gotta finish this up. I gotta, I gotta call this done. It's almost four o'clock. I know. This has, been, this has been a marathon. Almost at it for three hours. Well, right now. It's Sometimes almost. I get a little bit long. <laughs> oh come on. He, he said a little bit. <laughs> 
All right, so I'm going to take this and we're going to come up here and I'm going to grab that and then, whoops. No, that's not what I want. Take that. I'm going to grab that. There we go. We're going to create a new folder. I'm going to double that up. We're going to turn that one off. We're going to merge the group. And up here, I'm just going to lose some of these edges. Just softening some of these edges a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and grab my soft round. Turn that off. Uh, YouTube question, is it possible to tell a story too much while you're doing an illustration or a painting? Should we tell a little and let the viewer imagine the rest? Don't know if I'm being clear. Yes. You don't need to spell everything out. You know, you don't have to let, uh, you don't have to tell everything. The viewers can fill in the gaps. Absolutely. There, there are times when you are telling too much story. If the, if the viewer is getting everything spoon fed to them, then it becomes boring for the viewer. So what I'm doing now, if you can see this, let me blow it up a little bit more. I'm just blurring out little areas that are further away from camera. I'm giving it a shallower depth of field, which is actually going to shrink our character a little bit. But I'm using this in order to get away from having to do much more detail. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd be back. <laughs> there we go. Like that. Like so. Yes. There we go. There we go. I'm going to do a little tilt shift on them. Just, I'm going to get lazy. There we go, just on the bottom. Why do you why do you merge? You don't get to edit anymore. No, I kept I kept uh, I kept a folder that has the there we go. And then I'm gonna put a multiply. It's just my technique. Don't worry. It's okay. There we go. We'll just go a little darker down here. So we're not looking at so much of him. What's the difference between illustration and concept art? Well, concept art is there to feed, uh, is there as a, as it's meant to develop an idea. It's a concept. It's there to be developed and reworked and reworked. Whereas an illustration sits on its own. Now you could argue that a, a piece of concept art is in itself an illustration, but concept art in its definition is meant to uh, advance a piece of work further an idea.
increase that saturation a little bit. Crank it. Crank it. Just crank it. Go to my paintbrush. I go to my. There we go. How did you make the blur with the with those lines? How? Uh, what filter did you use? Do I used a smudge tool with a with a uh, airbrush, and I also used the blur filter. Color dodge. There, we're gonna knock this down to six percent. That should do it. Just brightening up a few areas here. You okay, Dustin? You gonna make it? I don't know. I can't. I can't. I can't hold on much longer. There, right, just giving him a little bit of glow right here. There we go. I feel like the moment it hits four, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> just need to crop this just a little bit because of the blur. Uh, will you do live streams next week? Yes, we will. Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday. We're Keeping up with it all the way up through August, September, no, early September, I'm going to be out of town, right? Oh, shoot. Because Lightbox is in September. Right. But is that like just a weekend thing? I, I yeah. Believe. All right. So, but the, the next big trip is in uh, October. Africa. What do you think of the smoke? No? Yes? No? Yes. Yes? Yes, yes. But I feel a, a bit... Hmm. I don't know. Hold on. Let me let me do it again. I feel like it should, they should like travel upward, like straight up. Yeah. This is one of my other custom brushes to make clouds and smoke. Works pretty well. Yes. I'm gonna try something. Try the thing. Well, I want it to feel like maybe the inside of his nose is glowing a little bit. Hmm. Like there's a little bit of heat in there. Maybe a little blue heat wave. His nose is on fire. <laughs> Something like that. What do you think? I can't I can barely see it from here. Oh. Yeah. Like he just like he just made it. Can you see it? A little bit, yeah. Like it's glowing a little. All right, we're done. We're losing <laughs> steam. <laughs> we're losing the momentum. Yeah, we are. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned something with making patterns, uh, like scales. Uh, Larry follows up his earlier comment. Success. Thanks, Aaron, for making me use my brain. I have learned to warp scales into a snake and procreate. Yes. yes. Awesome. That makes me happy. So, once again, uh, let's go over everything again, Dustin. Uh-huh. Um, don't forget, I have got a Patreon channel. And I'd love for you guys to visit me and help support us. And uh, um, it really helps us to give you guys what 
you want and it gives us enough uh, time to come over and, and do these live streams for you. Can you blow uh, up the uh, painting? Yes, otherwise I'm not able to do that. So let me blow that up a little bit more. There we go. There you go. How's that? That's better. Good. That was fun. That was a fun one to draw. Um, the other, so, so yeah, please visit our Patreon channel uh, page. It's patreon.com forward slash Aaron Blaze Art. And uh, if you can support us even a little bit, that really helps us out a lot. Also, let's go to the live, uh, the uh, master class. Mm -hmm. So we are doing our master class uh, this weekend. I know it's really short notice. Well, it's not short notice. We've been telling you guys, but we're coming up on the deadline uh, this fr Saturday and Sunday. And uh, we would love to have you guys there. I'm going to be talking about story, structure. I'm going to be pitching. I'm going to be talking about creature design like we did today, animal drawing. Um, I'm going to be talking about animation, my own career. We're going to be talking about character design, all kinds of stuff. So I'd love to see you guys if you can make it. And then also I've got my new brushes out, uh, my new Photoshop brushes. That's what we use today. And uh, they're, I'm finding them really, really valuable, the texture brushes. And uh, so go check those out at creatureartteacher.com. And then lastly, my brand new course on perspective is in pre-order right now. As a matter of fact, out of this uh, live stream that we did today, I discovered that I missed a, a, a video. So I'm going to be adding some videos on uh, reflections and shadows and perspective. I'm going to be adding those next week. And uh, you can get that at 40% off right now at creatureartteacher.com. So check that out because uh, that, that won't ever be that low again. So that's pretty much it. Um, perspective, paintbrushes, okay. masterclass, procreate. I really had a good time today. Thank you so much. I know this was a long one, but thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, I always love doing this with you guys. Twice a week is pretty cool. So go out, put some beauty back in the world, put your shopping cart away, and uh, be nice to somebody. And with that, Dustin... Thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. Hope you guys enjoy future streams as well. And until next time, Cowboy Bebop. See ya.